Good morning, everybody. It's March 15th, 2022 when I'm filming this. It's a beautiful morning outside. We're talking like minus two Celsius, which is what, like 35 Fahrenheit, somewhere in there? It's right around the freezing point of water anyways. Minus two, and it's supposed to go above zero every single day this week. Finally. With the warm temperatures obviously come the mess. So it's going to be a very messy day. We're gonna make sure we have plenty of washer fluid. We're gonna need it. Today is turning into an overnight. I have a trailer that's waiting for me up in Norway House, Manitoba. This is further north than I have ever been in my own province of Manitoba. The furthest north I've been has been up to Gypsumville or St. Martin up on Highway 6. That's only halfway to where we're going today. We're going all the way up Highway 6, practically all the way to the end of the earth. Halfway up the province to very close to where the road literally ends and there are no more roads going north. There's a trailer up there and we're gonna pull it back down here tomorrow, but I have to be up there 9 a.m. tomorrow to pick up this trailer. It's a nine hour drive, well, eight to nine hour drive. So obviously I'm gonna head up there right now, sleep there, pick up the trailer in the morning, pull it on down here, bring it to where it needs to go and then go home. So good thing we're in the Western Star the only thing is, I wasn't prepared food-wise. I always have my bedding with me and everything I need for an overnight. And I didn't bring socks, extra socks. I know. Drop the ball, Trucker Josh. I took all my socks out of my bag to wash them so that they were uh, they were all clean, right? And I forgot to put an extra pair back in. So, you know it. You, you know exactly where we are right now. Not at Timmy's, no, but that's a good idea. Maybe we should stop by there. Walmart, I need to pick up a sheet for this bed too. Cause in my shop, you'll notice that I have that red sheet over that table that I have in there temporarily, acting as a tablecloth. So I don't get grease and dirt and filth on that table. But that was the sheet from the truck. It had a hole in it anyway, so I needed a new one anyways. So we're gonna go to Walmart. We're gonna get a new sheet for the bed here, uh, some socks and food. I have a fridge here. I turned it on as soon as I uh, realized we're going up north. So it's cooling off right now. We're going to get some food for tonight and tomorrow. And uh, then we'll start making our way up the great Manitoba Highway 6. Better be careful when we're up there. We don't want to encounter any polar bears or anything. I don't think polar bears are that far south. We do have polar bears in Manitoba, but they're further north in Churchill, and I can't get there by road. Actually, this time of year, I probably could. There's ice roads and winter roads going up there. Most of the year, you have to take rail or fly into Churchill, and that's uh, a town up in northern Manitoba that's famous for polar bears. If you want to see polar bears, they do tours up there. All right, I'm going to shout out my province here a little bit. You go up to Churchill, Manitoba, they do polar bear tours. At least they did. I'm assuming they got those going again. They probably stopped for a while because of the whole COVID thing. But uh, I'm guessing that they're on board now. Today when I'm filming this is March 15th. So all of our mandates are dropped in our province today. So officially today we're back to normal. At least legally back to normal. Everyone still has the option if they want to. Uh, but yeah, all the signs I've been noticing everywhere I go. All the signs for like masks and stuff, they've all come down. So it's, it's, it's good, positive move forward, I think. So maybe the, the polar bear tours up north are going again. Hey, you guys want to go check out the polar bears? Go check them, check them out. Yeah, support my province. We don't got much going for us, but we got our polar bears. <sighs> I literally washed this truck last night. It was sparkling clean this morning. All you can do is keep trying, right? At least we don't have yesterday's dirt on here. This is all today's dirt. This is all just from this morning. Man. There you go, there's another thumbnail for you. All right, we're all filled up with food. Got my bed set up there. Got a new sheet for this bed. Let's rock and roll. Let's take this down. It's gonna slide down and just put that there. Everything else is in its place as it should be. <laughs> we got snacks, we got food, we got something to drink. 
We just need to get fuel yet. I'm at like three quarter tank, but I'm going way up north and I don't know what's up there. I don't know where the fuel stops are. So I'm gonna go and uh, fuel up before we leave the Winnipeg area here. I see you there. I got mirrors. There's one more car coming after this guy. Gesundheit, tight. Thank you. Oh, oh, didn't see that coming. Oh, speed bump. Good thing we weren't speeding. We're in the southwest corner of Winnipeg right now. This is McGilvery just up here. I'm going to take McGilvery to the west perimeter and take the west perimeter up to Headingley where we're going to fuel up. I'm pretty sure there's probably Petro Pass fueling stations up Highway 6. I'm pretty sure of it. I just, I just don't know for sure, you know? Grab fuel at the Petro Pass on the north side of Winnipeg on Route 90 instead, for those of you familiar with the city. It's this little congested truck stop here that's always jam packed and people always park in the no parking zones. Like this guy is here. Ah, now I gotta figure out a way of getting out of here. You're not supposed to park in the driveway, but people always do. No way to get out of here, except through that little driveway right there. Just rolled through Pine Moon Tang First Nation. And uh, Gypsumville is right down the road here or around the corner. And that's the furthest north I've ever been in my home province. You know, I got all excited before and I just realized I have been this far north once or twice. This is Highway 60, it goes to the Pa. I have gone up Highway 6 and turned onto the 60 before. So now, now we've officially entered uncharted territory. Okay, it was a false alarm before, false alarm. Now I'm officially further north than I ever have been in the province. I've got two false alarms, we'll see what happens for the rest of the evening, but I'm pretty sure this is it. We still got about five hours left to go, just under. Sure gets dark up here. Wow. You can't see anything, eh? <laughs> YouTube uh, is not very good with low light. So even when I uh, you want to show you guys something that I can see nicely in the back of my camera for some reason when you upload onto YouTube it darkens everything and when you try to brighten it it ruins it so there's something in the upload process or something that uh, sort of makes low light situations on YouTube tough to tough to share but I did find out some interesting information uh, my mom has some friends up here and uh, I had let the mom and dad know that I was going up to Norway house. I like letting people know where I'm going, especially when I'm going somewhere new and somewhere far north or something, somewhere very secluded. I'll tell my wife where I'm going, I'll tell my parents where I'm going, just so that people know where I'll be. Uh, just in case, you know? And uh, she messages me yesterday, because this is the next morning already, I already slept. I just woke up, as you can tell. And she said, oh, you have to cross an ice road to get to Norway House. I'm like, what? No one has said anything about an ice road. There's a bridge. I'm pretty sure there's a bridge. I don't got an ice road. And I look at the map and it says there's a ferry. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, so there's a, a small ferry. It's a cable ferry. It's about a half kilometer stretch, like a river that we got to cross over. I go, oh, there's a cable ferry. I don't know if it's an ice road. And I look more into it and I research it. And I'm like, oh, the cable ferry is closed for winter. It's an ice road. So I'm going to be crossing over the ice in my truck and then on the way back with a loaded trailer for the first time ever. And I'm a little nervous. I'm gonna continue this vlog now. Uh, time is now 6.30, 6.45 in the morning. Uh, it'll probably be light by the time I get there, but like I said, these low light situations on YouTube make it very difficult to share things. So by the time we leave Norway House in tomorrow's vlog, it'll definitely be light out and I'll be able to show you 
a little bit of ice road trucking. If we're lucky, we'll get it into this vlog today yet, but uh, we'll see what happens when we get there. I'm kind of hoping the sun will be up. That's why I slept on this side of the river. I was gonna go straight to my customer in Norway house and sleep there overnight. But once I found out that there was an ice crossing, I'm like, eh. I know on the website it says it's like it's probably better to cross at night because it's colder, the ice gets thicker, I guess. But I've never crossed the ice before and I don't want to get lost and I don't want to do it at night. My first time. I'm a little nervous. So uh, we're gonna go there now. We're gonna go the first thing in the morning and cross over. Uh, we'll be bobtailing with no trailer first, so that's okay. And uh, on the way back, we'll have a loaded trailer on the ice over a rushing river. Well, not a rushing river. If it was a rushing river, it wouldn't freeze over, but it's, a, it's like, I think it's the Nelson River. What river is it that we're crossing? Because we're way up north here. I have never been this far north in Manitoba in my life. Uh, we got a crossover. What is this here? Just looking on the map. And I'll show it to you on the map here as well. Josh, remember to go and put the map on there for the good people. So they can see what I'm talking about. Ah, here we go. Remember to put the map up here, Josh. Okay, so we're crossing right here. What is this? Is this a river? It's some kind of river. It doesn't, it's not telling me here. Maybe you guys can see it. On my screen here that I'm looking at, it's not telling me what river that is. But, uh, yeah, usually it's called the Ross Island Ferry. It goes, I guess, from Ross Island to Norway House. And I don't know why it's called Norway House. I don't know. I believe it's a First Nations Reserve. I don't think it's a Norwegian settlement, but it's called Norway House. All right, well, I don't know what it's called, but we gotta go over the water. Let's go. I hear there's a Timmy's on the way, so at least we get some Timmy's. Of course there's a Timmy's on the way. We're in the middle of nowhere, northern Manitoba. Of course there's a Timmy's. A little bit of a narrow bridge. Oh man, this road is so rough coming up here. Like seriously, all the way up. All the way up from the Winnipeg perimeter, all the way up to Norway House. The road is just terrible. <laughs> We're getting close to the ice crossing now. There's a sign coming up here, reduced speed ahead. What is this, a Norway House Ferry, one kilometer. Except from what I hear, the ferry isn't operating right now. We gotta drive across the ice ourselves. Okay. Detour ahead. All right, detour means going over the ice. Let's clean our window here so we can see what we're doing. Not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. I've never crossed ice before. There's the river right there. We gotta drive across it. You guys ready? Sorry, Google, ferry's closed. We are driving across the river here. And I'm sure it's not gonna be as freaky as I'm making it out to be in my mind right now, but you know, there's a first for everything. Status is open. Maximum weight of 39,500 kilograms. That's about uh, 80,000 pounds or so, 80, 80, 80, 90,000 maybe. Okay. Are we on the water yet? No, we're still on the... That's the edge right there. That's the river bank we're gonna drive down. There's a car coming this way. We're going that way. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And we're officially on the ice. I'm driving across water right now. It's 
my first time ever. I've lived in Canada my whole life, and this is my first time ever driving across an actual ice road. It's only half a kilometer long, okay? So it's not like uh, we're driving across a lake or anything, but. That actually wasn't that bad, eh? Okay, okay, we're almost there. All right, this southern boy wants to get off the ice now. Okay, we're on the banks. Banks of the river, okay, there we go, we made it. We didn't fall through. Well, that was fun. All right, there's a first for everything. Drove across the river today. I don't know why I was so nervous. That wasn't that bad at all. I guess I'd just never seen one in person before. Trucker Josh, Ice Road Trucker. It's official. This is Norway House that we're coming into here. Once again, has nothing to do with the Norwegians as far as I know. Maybe at one point it did, but now this is a, uh, a uh, Indian reservation or uh, indigenous reservation. First Nation Reservation. So what that means for people who aren't in Canada is the First Peoples of Canada have this land protected for their exclusive use by the Crown, by the Queen of Canada. So it is reserved specifically and exclusively for them. If I wanted to live and work here, I couldn't. I'm not allowed to live here or work here. I'm allowed to come in here and deliver and pick up stuff and, you know, visit. You know, I'm allowed to be here, but I can't actually live here and work here. See up there, the sign says, Welcome to Norway House Cree Nation. In God we trust. Oh, they have the same slogan here as the United States. Here's a fun Mennonite fact for you though, seeing as I have Mennonite heritage and uh, the reason I'm in Manitoba right now is the Mennonite immigration of 1874. When the Mennonites uh, wrote up their deal and their treaty with the crown, uh, they were also given reserves. Uh, we had the East Reserve and the West Reserve in Southern Manitoba, present day Steinbach and Winkler. That land there was also reserved for our exclusive use and was protected under the crown. The same way this land is protected for the people here. However, the crown did not honor their promise to us and did not protect that treaty or that agreement and they broke their promise to us. And so far, the crown still protects this land for the people here, but uh, our reservations, uh, it was called, it was called the East Mennonite Reserve and the West Mennonite Reserve. Uh, they were established 1874, I believe. And in the early 1900s, uh, the government went back on that and took that status away. Another little fun fact for you. And that's the trailer we came here to get. We're bringing us all the way down to Stonewall, Manitoba. What a seven hour drive or so. Seven, eight hour drive down south. It's like an office trailer. A portable, portable office. And I'm gonna end the vlog here, so thanks for watching today. Tune in tomorrow, I gotta pull this across the ice. Let's hope I don't fall through.